making any judgments as to who those supervisors are, that I expect you to at least try to use that flexibility. And I think that's a fair request. Right, that's a fair okay. request, okay. except it's, it's going over their heads and down below and not being heard properly. Oh, well, I, you know, it'll, uh, you know, it's like waves in a bathtub or something, you know. <laughs> it'll eventually settle out, but until you make the first wave, uh, you know, and I don't say that's easy for you all to deal with. I mean, I, I, I appreciate, uh, I've been there before. I, I know that's not easy, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you as honestly as I can, Bill, what my expectation is. And my expectation on that kind of question is, where you have legitimate flexibility, I really want you to use it, or at least try to use it. Uh, and where you don't have that flexibility, I at least want you to explain to employees wh why you don't have it and see if that stands the cold light of day uh, uh, in, in terms of the credibility of those explanations. And I, th I think that's a fair request to make. I mean, I, I get that kind of pressure all the time from the mayor and from the city council members and from fellow department heads and from other utility executives. Well, why can't you do this? Well, why can't you do that? And about half the time it's because, well, I've got this or that constraint about it. And half the time it's, well, maybe I could if I really wanted to. Uh, well, that's the, the determining what to really want to is, a, is an important part of this business. It, that, it's a lot better that we at least make those decisions consciously than if we just kind of go along the status quo and don't ask the question. And I know that's not comfortable, but that's, that's what I want you to do. I'm already a little over, and I've got to run off to a meeting with our good councilman Rice. Thank you all very much, uh, and appreciate the. Uh, and I, this is what I said to Bill. I don't, I don't mean to be flippant about it. I, I know this is not easy. I know that there are expectations building up down there that that are, you know, that are going to create some problems. But I think if we continue to try to do the best we can on these seven principles, that you know, that uh, that in an overall sense, even though it's going to be harder, and there are going to be a lot. But it's part of, you know, I mean, what I'm trying to do is place more responsibility on you all and more flexibility, too, as to how to, how to do that so that I'm not second-guessing you all the time. But with that comes the difficulty of, of all of some of these issues that we've discussed here today. Uh, but if we're going to make progress, that's the only way we can do it. It's, it's you all that have to do it. It's, it's not me. It's, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the management structure of the utility. Great. Thanks, everybody. Can you hold on for just a minute? No. Where are you going? Just a couple, a couple words. We can. What are we going to do? Uh, do talking about these things, uh, not just to all the supervisors in the utility, but to, to other employees as well. And we felt that the videotape was a means to, to help to get to a little wider audience. So don't be bashful and, and or don't be intimidated by the camera. It's not going to go anywhere if, uh, uh, if that's not your desire. Let me talk a little bit to start off about kind of why we're here today and how, uh, how this uh, how this particular session came about. Like I said, this is one of probably 12 to 15 sessions that I'm having with all the supervisors, basically, in the utility. Uh, uh, I think we're going to cover a total of probably 200, 250 people in groups of like this of, of 20 or so at a time to talk about the, the management principles. This is one of, of three initiatives that came out of the senior management retreat that we had last November of basically the deputies, all the division directors and associated staff in, in which both Betty and May uh, participated uh, in, in trying to, to look at ourselves and the utility and, and, and uh, 
uh, map out some priorities. Uh, you've seen at least one of those. This is one of three major efforts that came out of the retreat. The first one you experienced about two weeks ago, which was the cleanup day, or three weeks ago. That, that, that is one part of a continuing program to move us towards a paperless office kind of concept that we didn't even anticipate going in, but a lot of people got excited about and, and the cleanup day, and, and you will see a lot of successor activities to that is, uh, is one part of that. Second part, which I don't know that that uh, uh, whether you've had any direct visibility over, I know I know May and Betty are aware of it, is a major effort led by the Human Resources Division to completely codify our hiring and selection procedures. Awful lot of confusion uh, throughout the utility and a lot of inconsistency about how we approach the hiring and selection process. Uh, and the effort there is to, uh, is to both have a, a DPP as well as a, a manual. That it's not a cookbook, but it, it gives you as supervisors some guidelines and tells you what your options are as you go through various steps of the hiring and selection process. So uh, we will, you will have you know, an authoritative uh, kind of single reference source as to, uh, as to at least what the what the hoops are that you have to jump through as well as what your what your options are. Uh, um, again, a major area of, uh, of emphasis in the utility. Uh, the third thing, the third task group at the uh, at the retreat of which May, I think, was was on, Betty, you were in hiring and selection, you know? I was hiring and selection. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, uh, was, was one that focused on a, a couple of different things. One was the utility mission statement, which we we put out and uh, and disseminated here about three or four months ago, and the second one were these were these management principles. Uh, these basically have their have their genesis with me. Uh, uh, the task group worked on them, refined them. We went through a couple of sessions with all the division directors, and that's where a lot of the the sub bullet points that you see on them uh, came from. Uh, but that was a, 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 a Th that is a uh, kind of the third major effort that came out of the retreat. Uh, and not just the principles themselves, but the belief of the, of the task group that, you know, essentially I got directed to you, Hardy, should go around just like we're doing now and not just put these out on a piece of paper, but go out and, and talk with basically all levels of, of management in the utility and try to spend some time uh, talking about what what these are uh, and what they aren't, uh, for that matter. Uh, that being said, uh, as to how this, this came about, let me talk a little bit about the context in which I think you should, you should try to view these things. Uh, first thing is they're not new. You can pick up any Management 101 <laughs> textbook and, you, and you'll get the same basic things as you have here. And they may be a slightly different words, but, but it's not uh, you know, this is not the millennium. There's not, uh, uh, there's not. I don't think anything in here that's that's particularly startling. Uh, second thing is that that uh, uh, these are are my goals and my principles, uh, and and have just kind of grown out of a lot of talking that I've done in human relations training, kind of around the utility. You're the best judges of to what extent you do or don't practice these these particular principles. Uh, what I can tell you that I think is of value is this. I can't, nor do I want to, be involved in every individual personnel or program or administrative decision that you make as mid-level supervisors. But I can tell you that if you make a conscious effort to try to apply these principles in making those individual decisions that you make, that your chances of getting second guessed on the ninth floor are a lot lower. Uh, that's a, a constant and, to some extent, valid complaint of a lot of, of, of levels of middle management that I've certainly heard. Uh, what I get out of this, I think, I hope, is that, that I've got a, after we're through with this, I, I hope some higher level of confidence that decisions being made across the utility have some rough consistency to them in terms of the approach that's uh, 
being taken, at least more than, than before. We'll see whether that works, but, uh, but that at least is, uh, uh, is the intent of what, of what, uh, what I'm all about in, in trying to, to talk about these things. Uh, what I need to understand from you is where you don't think they'll work, or where you think there's problems, or where you think they're not explicit enough, or where they're off base. I need to know that. I mean, that, that's, uh, this is not a perfect world, and in, and, in, and in many respects, these are kind of purest sorts of things that have lesser or greater degrees of applicability depending upon your particular work circumstance and, uh, and the particular uh, uh, situation and individual decision that you may be making. And I had a session yesterday with, uh, with the engineers in which we talked about, I think it was the flexibility principle that came up, and there was a lot of discussion about that principle carried to its penultimate extreme could create chaos in the utility. Everybody just does their own thing and whatnot. Well, that's true. And any one of these things taken in, you know, in isolation from the other six could create real problems. So the, the, the intent is to, is to try to, uh, to have an overall scheme of things that, uh, that, that gives you a framework for, for managing. I guess the the final thing I'd say is that uh, all I can tell you about these kinds of principles is they work for me. I've spent 20 years in, in not just in this business, but in the Navy, the Department of Energy at Bonneville, and the private <coughs> sector here, and I've tried to, to to use these and live by these in my professional life, and you know, and I think they've they've succeeded for me, and they've succeeded. For for other people that uh, that I've observed, both superiors, you know, and employees who've who've tried to uh, who've who've used them and practiced them, uh, so I believe in them. I mean, and, and I believe in them not for some theoretical philosophical reason. I believe in them because I've seen them work in a variety of different work situations. Uh, you know, I've seen them work on a on a destroyer or a cruiser in the Navy, and I've seen them work in a in a in a in a federal bureaucracy, and I've seen them work uh, in the field of the Bonneville Power Administration, and those are th about three as widely diverse uh, uh, sets of conditions that I can think of. But but each place uh, uh, they've uh, they've tended to work. That being said, uh, I just encourage you to, as we go through these, to to please interrupt or or, or jump in wherever, uh, so that uh, we can. Be, make this as, as, as much benefit as possible to, to you all as well as to me. Uh, why don't we take one, three, and four as a group? Uh, let's, I'd like to set aside delegation of authority for a second. We'll come back to that one, but, but uh, I'd like to talk about uh, uh, setting goals and flexibility and accountability as a group because I think they tend to, they th they tend to fit together in that particular way. These three principles are kind of at the basis, certainly, of any planning activity that you, that you should do, and in terms of, of how you uh, judge and measure the, your own performance and the performance of the people that, that work for you. Uh, the key, I think, is to is to is to think ahead of time about what goals, what it is you want to accomplish. Uh, sit down, uh, uh, not just yourself, but but with at least some of the people that you supervise. Try to involve them to some extent in in, in setting those goals. Uh, second step in in that process is to try to allow people some flexibility or as much as as uh, as is possible in achieving those goals. Uh, that varies obviously from work situation to work situation, but I think the key is to focus on what gets done and when it gets done and be less concerned with how it gets done. Now there is, you know, that perhaps is more applicable to administrative sorts of things than maybe it is to, to some of the, of the technical work that, uh, that we have. You obviously have technical specifications and whatnot, and, and that you have to that you have to to live up to in, in in some of the areas that are perhaps less applicable in the other areas. But I guess it's been my general experience that if you focus more on the on the what and the when, and are a little less concerned about the how, 
you generally get the best results from the, from the people that you supervise. The third part of that is accountability. And again, that's the, that's the what and the when. You set the goals, or you set them a year ahead of time or six months or whatever. You have some period of time in which the employee can accomplish those goals. Uh, and, and then there's an accountability. There's an accounting at the end of that time as to whether they've measured up or not, uh, whether that's through performance appraisal or, or whether that's uh, uh, a less formal means of doing that. That's just as important as, uh, as the other parts of the, of the process. Let me give you two examples of how that I think are applicable uh, to, to how I've tried to, to, to use these, this kind of goal setting measuring process uh, at the utility in the year and a half I've been here. The first one is an affirmative action in, in the so-called social contract, which I think at least most of you have probably heard something about. Uh, when I came to the utility uh, over a year and a half ago, what I found, I guess, in the affirmative action area was we did these annual affirmative action plans, and we, you know, we worked them out between us and the and uh, the affirmative action unit and city personnel. And about all that the average manager knew was that he or she was charged to do good things. And and then you had this tool called selective certification, and and what you had was essentially, uh, you know, you'd. you'd position would come open and you'd send it up to the EO officer and you'd get a certification and that was that and and that was the you know more or less the marching orders you had as to how you were to fill that position or what you were going to try to do uh, uh, no clear idea of what your goals were as a, as a mid-level manager in the utility and you had a staff office in the utility making decisions uh, in large part on how positions to were, were to be filled with only one consideration in mind, uh, which was the, the how does this fit into the utility's overall affirmative action profile. That's very important, but it's not the only thing that you have to or should consider in making a personnel decision, hiring decision. You've got to consider experience, background, how that individual and the capabilities of that individual fits with the capabilities of the other individual in the work unit. Well, it struck me that that was not a, a terribly good way to, to do, either to produce good results in affirmative action or to to, to manage that. So we went to this system of, called the social contract, which uh, essentially had the division directors set the goals uh, and control the certs. And that's the way that the thing stands now. And the way we did that was essentially go through a process where I sat down, started at a superintendent staff meeting about two years ago, and essentially told division directors, look, you know I want to be very aggressive in this area, but I want you to tell me how many people, women and minorities, you can hire over the next year. Betty, if, you're, if you tell me that you're going to have uh, a turnover of 20 people in the customer service division next year, uh, and I'll, uh, what I want to know is how many of, of those positions can be filled affirmatively. And, and what happened was Betty and other division directors came back and said, well, we can fill 14 of the 20 with, with women and minorities, and we added all that up, all those up, and and with a, some minor adjustments, that presented a pretty uh, uh, satisfactory affirmative action profile for the utility. But the division director had been the one that had essentially set the goal. Uh, and my bargain with the division director was, I'm going to hold you accountable at the end of the year for hiring 14 to 20. And that's going to be reflected in your performance appraisal uh, and, uh, and generally reflect as a, as, a, as a very important measure of your performance. But my bargain with you is, I won't tell you which 14 you have to hire. You know, so the individual decision on each individual hiring decision is yours to make. Uh, and uh, and yet, at the end of the at the end of the year, you're still held accountable for achieving 14 of 20 uh, affirmative hires. Uh, that system, I think, has worked pretty well. It's gotten us better affirmative action. It's a fact. We've had better affirmative action performance in the, in the last year and a half than we've had in the prior two or three years. Uh, uh, and I think it, it's given the divisions a larger measure of control over that process 
than they've had in the past, because basically the division director now suggests the cert. Now, the EO office is still involved in reviewing that, and if they think that it's at odds with our affirmative action profile, they can disapprove it, and ultimately that can go all the way to my level for a resolution. But uh, uh, it's the division director that proposes and the EO office that disposes uh, in, the, in the nature of how the certification works. We've, we've had better affirmative action performance, but more to the point of this discussion, how we've done that, I think, is an illustration of, of how these three principles work. We've set the goals and we set them ahead of time. I didn't set the goals. John Saban didn't set the goals. The EO office didn't set the goals. By and large, the division directors set the goals, and to what extent they you know, they involve subordinate level managers or not varies from division to division. But the fact is that the, basically the division directors set the goals for, you know, have set their affirmative action goals because they're the ones that are going to be responsible for the hiring. Uh, uh, we've set the goals and we've set the goals with the involvement of the people who are going to have to do the hiring. Uh, I think we provided for flexibility.